I couldn't believe what was going on around me. The way that prices were moving around for, for things that I uh, was buying in shops, the way that uh, the, the policies that were being talked about and as, as responses to the financial crisis, it seemed completely alien and completely unreal to me. The thing that attracted me to macroeconomics in the first place is that it's the, the sort of the field in economics which deals with very big questions, so the type of questions that affect everyone in the economy. And of course, when we had the financial crisis, lots of new questions became available for people to answer, and this made it a very exciting and uh, interesting area to be in. I wanted to better understand how some problem with US mortgages could be affecting my life in New Zealand in such a in such a meaningful way. I was always aware that there were poor countries. I was born in India. Uh, my family moved around a lot. I grew up in Nigeria and also in the US and the UK. So I, I knew from that experience that there were huge differences in living standards uh, around the world and, and I was you know troubled by them even as a, as a little kid. When I was growing up one of the things that puzzled me or something that I observed was some very well-off people, but lots of people also living in poverty. Why are poor countries you know, poor? Why are some, some countries rich? That's the fundamental question of development economics. In modern economies, the way that we experience and the way that we share these experiences are also shaped by government policies. You will have heard of austerity in the UK. This was a set of policies that shaped how some groups in society experience the recession versus other groups in society. And these choices, these policies, they have profound impacts on people's lives. So it wasn't until I sort of, you know, heard about the experience of, of one country that was able to go from poor to, to rich in a, in a very short uh, period that I started to become interested in this possibility. Um, and once I started thinking about that, I, I found it hard to, to think about anything else. So in my own work, I've been lucky enough to, to be able to collect my own data. I think one of the most interesting aspects of my research is actually going out to these settings, seeing what's going on there. It can be an incredibly enriching experience, but it's, it's quite fun, to be honest. So. <laughs> I've been here for a very long time, and the research environment has changed and improved dramatically in the past decade. Um, we have a variety of colleagues with, um, within many areas of expertise. Uh, we have a large group of macroeconomists. We have a group of colleagues who come from very different uh, backgrounds, uh, different research cultures, uh, and that enriches a lot the research culture of, uh, of the school. So it's a pleasure to um, carry out research in uh, the School of Economics. Financial crises are not new. And uh, for a long time, we've had financial crises that have affected people's lives in all areas of the economy. Over the last 150 years, we have learned a few things. So the crisis that we suffered in 2009, while it was one of the biggest crises that, that Western economies had, had suffered, in many countries, the effects of that crisis were not as severe as earlier crises had been. The work that I'm doing is to help further improve this policy making, further improve our responses to these crises when they happen, and to make sure that the costs of these crises are not concentrated among people who have the least capacity to bear them. At a one point in the course, I actually teach them um, some of my own work, so they get a sense of what what I, as one of their instructors, is, is working on, and uh, they can they can see that you know research isn't something which is sort of dreamed up and handed down. It's something that that, that, that people actually uh, work on, and, and they they could be involved in as well if they if they wanted to be. The syllabus in economics, in general, is very nimble and it's very dynamic, and it responds very quickly to the economic questions of the time and the questions that are interesting the general public, the questions that are interesting academics, the questions that are interesting policy makers. And I think that's what makes it an attractive 
proposition to you know, potential students at a graduate level and, and, and at an undergraduate level as well. They see what's on the syllabus and they see that it relates quite sharply to what is currently being discussed. You don't go to university to learn particular topics. You come to university to learn how to think and very importantly, how to come up with new and important questions.